So, Absat, uh, what is your first definition? Wilson disease. Okay. Uh, he's a 14 year old boy. So, in this 14 year old boy, will you consider neuro Wilson or hepatic Wilson? Uh, what are the points in favor of neuro Wilson in this patient? Sir, he has coiform movements, and then there is a and uh, although he has some metastatic uh, uh, gait, his brother is hard to speak as well, but uh, based on his findings, neuro Wilson is definitely the problem. He is brother of this patient. What do you want to do with the brother? Sir, I want to screen the family. Very good. She would like to screen the family. So, what screening test will you do in, in this patient? Sir, a screening test is 24 hour urinary copper and serum cerebral plasma level. So, one is 24 hour urinary copper, other is serum cerebral plasma level. Very good. These are the two screening tests. So, any other screening test you can also do? Um, sir, I examination for the screening. Help. Help. Very good. Very good. Genetic testing can also be done for screening. Very good. Now, considering him as a case of Wilson disease, what first test would you like to do? Keeping Wilson in your mind, the first and easy test for Wilson. Seroplasmin. Very good. So, serum seroplasmin. What will be the cutoff after which you think that is seroplasmin? It will be is it low or high? No, it will be low. Oh, yes, very good. You know it. Serum cytoplasmin will be low, less than 20 micrograms will be diagnostic. Very good. So, but the problem with cytoplasmin is that in an acute phase reactant, if this patient is having infection, it can be raised as well. So, it's not a reliable. So, what other more reliable tests would you like to do in this patient? Oh, but you should say 24 hour unicorn. Very good. So, would you like to do some other thing before sending the 24 hour urinary copper? So, Vistamine challenge. Very good. Vistamine challenge. So, she would do a Vistamine challenge test. That will make the 24 hour urinary copper more reliable. So, how many tablets will you give in how much time? So, two tablets. Uh, before starting the collection, before start the collection, we will give uh, one tablet and then uh, we will start the urinary for 24 hours and after 12 hour apart, we will give another tablet. Okay. Very good. So, you have to give two tablets, 500 mg, 12 hours apart, and then you collect 24 hour urinary cup. So, will you like to discard the first sample? Yes. 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 The first, when you when you fix the time for 24 hours, the first sample should be discarded, and then you will collect it for the next 24 hours. Is it clear? Very good. Okay. Once you have done, the report comes of 24 hour unit copper. What is the cut of limit which exceeds then it shows that it is having is having this? 1600 micrograms. Very good. So if it is more than 1600 micrograms, then that's diagnostic for Wilson. Okay. The family is not convinced and they are not accepting this thing and they are asking you to do some gold standard test. So which one gold standard test would you like to do in this patient? Okay, very good. So she would like to do liver biopsy in this patient. Now, what finding will you expect on liver biopsy in this patient? Sir, on liver biopsy, will you see the copper content that would be greater than 50 microgram per gram per liver? Excellent. So if the copper content is more than 250 micrograms per gram dry weight of liver, then this is diagnostic for Wilson disease. Excellent. Okay. So first of all, you have taken history, you have taken, you have done a very good examination, then cellulopalm, then 24 hour unit copper, then the liver biopsy. Now the diagnosis has been made. You have also screened the family. Now we are going to start the treatment. When you are going to start the treatment, what first instruction regarding the diet will you give to this patient? So first of all, you will restrict the copper containing food that includes the chocolates, um, seafoods, nuts. Very good. One more thing. Liver. Liver. liver yes. So liver, shellfish, nuts, and chocolates are not allowed. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. Now, what drug will will you like to give in this patient? Sir, we will 
Penicillamine, yes, you're right. Penicillamine. What is that dose? Twenty mg per kg per day in three vital doses. Twenty mg per kg per day. Very good. So once you have started penicillamine, twenty mg per kg per day. What adverse effects can you expect in this patient? Sir, uh, you could have the Forty syndrome. You could have SRI like rash. Um, Stephen Johnson. Stephen Johnson. Stephen Johnson. Like that. Even SRI can can be satisfied. Good posture syndrome. Pasture syndrome and a granulocytosis as well. Okay, so these are the expected side effects of penicillin. The family is not convinced when they have heard about these side effects and they want some alternative drug. So, can you tell some alternative drug? Sir, no, that's an adjunct drug. Any alternative penicillin? Yes, polyvinate. You can also say trientine. Trientine is another drug which you can give. Okay. Now, Azir is a good student. He went home and he, read, he is reading the internet. He comes back and he is saying that uh, penicillamine can, can be an anti metabolite of an important vitamin. So, which vitamin would you like to give this patient? No, B6. B6. Because penicillin is an anti metabolite, so you will like to give vitamin B6, paradoxin, to this patient. Okay? Very good. Now, which adjunct drug would you like to give in this patient? Zinc sulfate. Why not? No, uh, zinc acetate. Zinc acetate. Not zinc sulfate. Why you prefer zinc acetate and why you don't prefer zinc sulfate? Yeah, that's why you are giving. That's a, she told me a very good point that we give zinc because zinc decreases the absorption of copper. That's why we are giving it as an adjunct therapy. But my question was why zinc acetate and why not zinc sulfate? You will give zinc sulfate in diarrhea. Help. Yes, it's a it's a uh, preferable chelator. And secondly, if you give zinc sulfate, you need very high doses. You need very high doses. So zinc acetate uh, requires less dose as compared to zinc sulfate. Okay. So do you remember the dose of zinc acetate here in Wilson disease? So you can take the help. Help. 25. 25 milligram. Three times a day. 25 milligram. Three times a day. Very good. So, you have given a good treatment and patient comes to you on follow-up. So, what would you like to see on follow-up? Sir, uh, I will uh, see the improvement of the symptoms. Very good. You will see whether the symptoms have improved or not. And what on examination? Very good. So, with good treatment, the KF rings can disappear. Sir, how time it disappear? Do you also expect some cataract in this patient? Do Vincent patients have some cataract? Yes. Yes. Which cataract? Sunflower cataract. Sunflower cataract. So you can also expect some sunflower cataract. So how you, will you differentiate between cataract and KF rings? So KF ring in patient will give testimony by bringing to the uh, junction of uh, Okay. Yes, you are told right that the location is different. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, Azir is a grown-up boy and he wants to get married. What advice will you give to this patient? Advice you know. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Azir.